deep vision down. Last time, that was taken away from them and Medios got caught out. Maybe this time around, he won't have the confidence to go that deep into the jungle. And Kez has done such a good job of punishing every jungler. Kez has been pretty much the one controlling most of the vision for complexity. Pretty much ever since he actually joined the team, the whole team chipping in, but he has been making a lot of strong calls and he is the one also calling where the wards should be right. placed. You have a limited supply of these wards that you're using, so it's actually very important <laughs> when and where you place them, timing them with the aggression that you want to take and with the objective that is the final goal. When's the last time we saw both Kogma and Tristana band out? It's gonna be great. We're definitely getting down the line of 80 carries here. It won't be too bad for Sneaky and Robert. They still have things they love to play, but we're not gonna get those late game hyper carries out of those two this time. It's going to be all about the yeah, beginning of this one. Yeah, I'm excited to see uh, what they go to next Me too, year. me too. Uh, the the, the, the changes to Lucian's were, to Lucian were pretty interesting. Corky's always a very good champion for the mid-game spike to see if any of these teams really want to go early. Uh, but really, all the top laners have been left open as well. So I don't think we'll see the early top lane picks because uh, they will probably want to save that for a counter. And since all of the powerful top lane picks are available, uh, you probably want to focus on your jungle or your AD carry here. Let's see, complexity uh, waiting on it. Support. The other thing you could attack is High's champion pool. They've already banned out a couple mids, and since it has been a problem for Cloud9, the possibility of an early Prolly pick it, is Yeah, Prolly does not mind blind picking whatsoever. Exactly. I mean, he's... He's just got so many weird picks in the, in the mid lane. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good way to put it. He's fine with early picking something just because he's all, oftentimes his opponents will not mm -hmm. have played against that anyway. Jango, so Jango in the jungle. Right, focusing on Kez. As we said before, I mean, yep. Kez has really been the turning point for this team ever since he joined. That's safe. Their, their coordination and their focus on warding as we heard probably talk about in the interview, this is what they think is the most important thing in the current meta. Yeah. And Kez has done a good job uh, being a big part of that. So at least a jungler where he can get an early side stone is very important for them. Good fight, crowd control. Bit of an ability to pick somebody off. So what do they synergize us with? That is a good question. Who is it going to be? Because it could still be a melee carry for complexity in the top yeah. lane. Westrice is a player right. who does play melee carries. However, if we look at their recent games, he's been almost always tank. So that yeah, would yeah. probably point towards something like a Jinx for the bottom lane for Robert. And that would be what most of their shields would be for this time around. However, the possibility is always there. And it's very exciting to see West Rice on those melee carries uh, because he does have a knack for working his way out of problematic situations. Yes, he does get himself into those situations, <laughs> but he's also good at he's working his way He's been in so out. many that he's getting out of them now. Exactly. It's just, it's all working out. That's how you evolve. There's a couple of invisible <laughs> champions picked up for Cloud9, though, so that's got to That's true. put some uh, problems in the uh, works here for Complexity, because now that there's an Evelyn on the board, and they've already locked in their mid laner, there's no, kind of there's no chance of that sort of counter yeah. TF who's great at catching Eve out. Uh, if she does get a little bit too deep. And, oh no! Uh, and it, it makes Cloud9 have to, wor or uh, Complexity have to worry about. Oh Evelyn, man. Just omnipresent oh. jungle <laughs> pressure. Kobe, I was talking to Robert yeah. as the players were getting makeup, right? But get, getting ready for their first game. And he's like, hey, let me see my stats. I want to see how I do. I should never pick Twitch or Corky. Okay. <laughs> oh man. Forced to lock in Corky coming into this one. Robert going against his own words of just a few hours ago. But they do lock in the Maokai as well here, Kobe. Yeah, get he, another is lock not, in for that. he has not played Corky in the LCS for a long, long time. Was that 11 weeks ago? Yeah. Or so. We'll see how it works out this time, though. Uh, pretty strong mid game here from Complexity. They have some very, very strong yep. uh, attacks here. With Maokai being extremely popular now in Europe and yeah. uh, I guess making its way over to Korea last night as well. West West goes right back to that pick it's into gonna be the great. Mojo. Oh my god, as soon as you talk about Maokai getting popular too, you're like, mm, what would be the most fun matchup to watch? Maokai yeah. versus Mundo in the top lane. I'm ready. The, <laughs> the, the most ridiculous tank fight ever. We're, uh, we're making our way back around to the days of the, the Mundo <laughs> Trundle, Shivana 
meta. But yeah, we'll see here because there is a lot of potential for Cloud9 uh, pickoff. They've got two invisible champions, yep. and they also have a lot to work off in the mid lane with Syndra being able to set up ganks so easily for either of those two when they start roaming. All right, so as the teams load onto the rift, let's see who you voted to take this one. It might be changing now. According to LOLesports.com, however, when we took it, 79% of you are saying that Cloud9 are going to rebound here with a win. Also, keep on voting on Twitter. Tweet the hashtag either C-O-L-Win or C-9-Win to LOL Esports, and we will update it throughout the game. So, West Rice, back on that Maokai. Very happy to do it because of the recent trend that we've seen him going to tank yep. over and over and over. Maokai might be the best tank right up there with Mundo. We actually have the two best tanks in the game right now um, in the top lane. So we'll see how, yeah. how that one does play out. The changes to Maokai are so feel good. Like sometimes there's changes and you're like, I like this. But this is like quality of life feel good when his alt stays around you now. I like it. So what, good what it really did to him is he is the premier peeling tank. Yeah. He is so good at peeling, especially against melee carries. So this Evelyn here, Medios, uh, it's going to be very hard for him to uh, get anywhere near Robert X Lee. Yeah. I think that it's going to be very hard for anyone on Cloud9 actually uh, to take out Robert unless they land one of those long-range Syndra stuns through the team. It's one of the big things about Syndra. Her crowd control can go right through your front line. Doesn't matter if it hits that Maokai. Look out on the back side. Oh, he's got Mundo. Balls for president. Mundo. We will see. Coming out into the rift. Complexity versus Cloud9. Doesn't seem like there's going to be any lane swappage going on. Maybe as of right yet. We're going to see how they get some deep wards in. I've been kind of lackluster throughout the entire day on deep wards. Be sure to know where Medios is going. Yeah, if there was to be a lane swap, uh, I'd probably expect uh, the Sneaky and Cloud9 to try and do that so that they could get Twitch to his Blade of the Ruin King as quickly as possible and then have him roam around to make those picks. However, Cloud9 also would not want to lane swap because they have Evelyn, and Evelyn also wants Ooh. to take advantage of the roaming early. Right. Which is you don't taken down that. a notch by the lane swap. So it's funny how Cloud9 have both the incentive as, uh, as well as the uh, something to dissuade them from pulling off the lane we swap. Go. Oh. Looks like they won't be doing it this time around. Kill a spider link? Kill a spider link. There you go. Smite it. <laughs> Quick thinking. Smote it. Get that five gold. That's just smoot. Smoot? Smote. Smot it. Just somewhere in there. Just keep on tweaking it. <laughs> and if enough people repeat it, there you go. then it doesn't even matter if it was the right word in the first place. Maybe that's it's how, just, maybe it's ever changing. That's how you change language, Riv. Yep. You could be the one. No. I already say enough different things. It's not followed. <laughs> All you have to do is get enough people to follow you. There you go. All right. It looks like, though, yeah, we probably won't have the lane swap, but it will be topside uh, starts for both junglers. Uh, and that ward on the red yeah. will give up the Evelyn initial start here. Hey! Sneaky indeed. Get Maybe that damage. will be. So it is going to be lane swap then. If he shows up in the mid lane for a gank, that's 100% that's that's lane swap there for Cloud9. That's yep. the most common thing to do with a Twitch when you want to get him uh, to that early Blade of the Rune King so he can get to start roaming around ganking is first, get off an early mid gank. And even though they had Vision of Eve, so they felt content uh, to push up, it does give a small boost to high in the mid lane. Mm -hmm. We'll take down Medios' early roaming a little bit. Bubba Dub, but not man. soaking up any experience on that. You can see his bar isn't even an inch full. So he gets out of that one, really just causing a little bit of harass. But see how this works for Medios. He doesn't like to go around the jungle with a buddy. He usually hinders his jungle a little bit. Yeah, I mean, it's going to take it down a little bit there mm -hmm. uh, for Evelyn. Maybe it will relieve some pressure they for They do let Crawley him get the, most of the minions, though, always. But, um, Mundo is, does not have a bad time in the jungle either, so he can help <laughs> take out those camps pretty quickly with the cleaver and then makes his way right down here to the bottom lane of soak up experience. Now, meanwhile, Cloud9 are banking on the fact that there's a dive coming in because Elise is really strong at diving. Uh, but Medios, he took a chance there and he went to go do the white. Now he's kind of screening for balls to see if the dive is coming. Here it comes and they're able to back out just in time. They don't even have to use wow. a ward to watch for this one because they 
expect it coming in, and Midos is able to watch out four balls. So good job by Cloud9, avoiding the early gank. Now the question is, what do they do about the dragon? Because their support is showing in yeah. lane. So it's not even like Cloud9 are pretending that they will contest an early dragon. Oh, hello. Straight aggression. Coming out Whoa! again. Oh, he nailed it! West Race is still level one, though. This could be bad news bears. No ignite. Complexity! Oh, oh the shield. shield! It's only so much! He will burn, but he has enough HP after chugging a potion. So close. Great counter. That is a huge, huge yeah, boost for Cloud9. Wow. They took out so much health from Complexity's pool right there that they delayed this drag. Usually, you sacrifice a dragon when you go for a lane swap. Everybody knows that. For Cloud9, uh, they were yeah, sort of... Right taking that into account. But because Complexity went for this ill-advised gank mid, and Cloud9 were able to turn around two versus three, dealing way more damage than they received, they gained so much control of this mid lane and a bot elimination in time to leave top lane and get into the fog of war. Now Complexity can't take this advantage, and Cloud9 basically gets this early Twitch start, early Twitch into Blade of the Rune yeah. King, for free. They haven't given up anything. All that Cloud9 have to do is get one ward down there by the dragon, and it will be very hard for Complexity ever to go for it because it's an Evelyn jungle, and they always have to be worried wow. about positioning. Great dodge. Things like that keep the pressure up in every lane as well. If Complexity were able to get that, Cloud9 would have had to react. So small like moves. Complexity going or, go or, uh, Complexity are going for it. They ping out already. Elimination's on the bottom side, so they can try and contest this dragon. You take a lot of damage as Complexity going for this, but Meteos is in base, so it might be perfect time for Complexity to rush this dragon. If bottom lane and Syndra don't both collapse right now and play around with Complexity, then they're going to get this one. Ooh, they don't get in there. No vision for C9. They didn't get that ward down, and they end up giving away the early dragon anyways. It is being traded, though, by a full la uh, lane of farm. Sneaky has been able to freeze the top lane in his area, so this is a full lane of experience and gold that's being traded for that dragon. Cloud9 are focusing all of it onto Sneaky. Well, they're going to have to. Everything's been about late game in the AD carries. Man, I really, you can still get that out of him. I really thought that Cloud9 were going to come away with defending that early dragon, but they didn't get that one ward down. And Complexity do a great job. Complexity did a great job of securing that because if you don't come away with that dragon trade for this top lane advantage, uh, sneaking that Twitch over there, then it's going to be really detrimental to your mid game. Nice dodge, Lemonation getting in front. The stand behind me and a bit of unbreakable for safety. Still waiting to see how these teams are really going to be able to build each other up, where the first kill is going to go when we start. Right now, his focus is still in the top lane here for Complexity. If they can take down Sneaky, it'd be a great shutdown there. Yeah, so Sneaky, what he's done by freezing this lane is draw this level two Maokai out into the danger zone. If, if Cloud9 actually bring over another member, then this is still a very squishy Maokai. Twitch is level six right now. Yeah. Highest level on Cloud9. High just tying him now. He is extremely, extremely dangerous. Even though he hasn't gone back to purchase, the power that you have from levels. Here we go, the slow comes in. Cloud9 playing this one perfectly. Spray and pray, actually, oh! right attack gets in range. He goes to the flash, gets the expunge. Anything else on Dekez? Not gonna happen. But first, but going over to Sneaky as complexity. And High looks to get another one. That's gonna. Oh, no, he does get him. So, what happens when you repel is it makes you. In, untargetable. It does not make right. you invulnerable. You were already targeted. Since Syndra's uh, ultimate already had uh, been cast, it's still going to do damage to you because the target has already been acquired. Bottom lane, a little bit of a scuffle for brush control. Lemonation going back and forth. Bubba Dub here. We're still waiting on level sixes from this lane. And man, oh, they're just playing with fire right there. It's well done by Cloud9. Uh, Sneaky and not hesitating to flash in because he does have the expunge to finish him off there. And that is a huge bonus for Cloud9 that it went to Sneaky so that he can start roaming around with Ouch. Meteos. Yeah, it's already gone. We know, Boom. We know the end of that story. Um, but also, it sets Westrise so far behind. You cannot have a tank have this bad of a start. 
No. He will not be able to perform bad his news. position. He goes in, he's a little baby jumping in, and he's <laughs> as easy to kill as a sapling, basically. God, uh, it doesn't help if you miss uh, melee CS either. But right. uh, it's going to be very easy for anyone on Cloud9. If he twists it, advances right into the fight, he's just going to get blown up. So he's going to have to have the Orianna ball on him, yeah. plus um, the extra shields from Morgana or something in order to keep him alive and set up that shockwave. Without that, I mean, uh, Cloud9 can easily just disperse and focus him down. It's been rough. They played the, the jungle buddy system a lot better, that's for sure, with Meteos getting more balls then went to lane when they went from top to bottom and soaked it up. West Rice was forced to stay with uh -oh. Mads for he longer. He just goes right back to take advantage of the baby in the top lane. West Rice gonna get hit up here. It looks like 2v1. Oh, I don't think he's look gonna at have that enough chunk. time. That's gonna hurt. One more. Gives him the business. I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and the funny thing is that even though Kez is on the top side of the map, it's super dangerous for him to go try and soak oh. up experience here. That's just gonna be a tower hit. Oh yeah! Oh my God! Oh. Hyde says, "What are you serving? I'll have two. Woo! Oh, pain, pain here for complexity so far. Man, probably remember, thought he had the upper hand. On remember that. too that yes, complexity are two-one versus Cloud Nine, but the two games that they won were the first two games of the season when Cloud Nine were suffering yep. and still trying to get back from all of the shakeup that they had to do when splitting up for All Stars and High having his. Uh, problems with his lung. That's right. Here. Oh, Bubba Dub with the flash. Bubba Dub flashes and throwing down the stash. Authority, what a flash to the safe side of the Lemon Nation Nation. <laughs> He's going to go down. Boom, yes, there it sir. is. Flash shot, bang, bang, boom. Get Robert X Lee going because Sneaky, he already had some kills before that. So that's a great shutdown. Complexity needs to keep that roll going. Yeah, he hasn't got the Blade of the Rune King finished quite yet. And the Sheen power from Corky Ooh. is way too much burst. That's Once great. again, Midos does get uh, caught out and they burn the flash. So the double kill down bottom is good for Complexity because they do have, you know, more mid game oriented uh, set up here. However, the dragon not back up right for them yet. So they aren't really able to get um, extra global gold after that. It is going to boost Corky towards that Trinity Force though, which they really, really need because man is their top laner uh, going to need some help at the next dragon fight. 24 seconds, Cloud9 setting up for it already. These deep wards are seen, so at least the sweepers can be used in the right spots, but it's not gonna help if they can't get to dragon in time. Now, Westmars is walking down because he doesn't have a teleport. What I'd like to see Cloud9 here do is not start up the dragon and just use the vision advantage that they have to delay complexity. If they just poke complexity here over and over and delay them from doing dragon, Cloud9 will get a huge win. Westrise can't get back up to that top lane. Balls will get damage onto the turret. Complexity are very vulnerable to poke damage right now. Yeah. The Syndra stun is extremely long range and could be devastating to even the tank if it goes through, but High gets caught out! Whoa! That seems to be a very dangerous area on the map for High. More than once he's been down. Gonna this be a big is play. terrible for Cloud9. They cancel the teleport too, so he walks down. Great pick from Complexity there. Huge, huge props getting that pick off because that was exactly what they needed to take away all of the extra power that Cloud9 had. Cloud9 just lost not only Dragon, but also their teleport advantage. Pretty big swing right there. This will be something new for Complexity, that's for sure. They usually get the early, early lead. They use, they have a very poor record of coming back from uh, a deficit. So to do this against Cloud9 on Super Week would be very big. It's the advantage of running the Elise and Morgana, which we always used to talk about when Cloud9 right, popularized it factor. first. You know, both, they ha she has been nerfed since then. However, this is the benefits of running both those. They keep throwing out these skill shots you know, there's very, very little opportunity cost of throwing out that skill shot. You only, it's only going to be down uh, for a few seconds. Or, well, the cooldown right now is pretty long. He hasn't built up his <laughs> cooldown reduction. But right now, you know, he doesn't put himself in danger to do it, at least. And it, he was rewarded right there. Huge reward. Very little risk. So complexity, get right back in this game. And they need it, too. We'll see what they can do with this, uh, with this Corky. Because Corky's the one packing most of the punch.
for this team. They still have a bit of ways to go. Probably not the strongest, sitting at about 600 gold, and Athene's unfinished. Quite a bit of CS behind, so it's been a rough mid lane. High's been working it well with the rest of the team there. Very good control by Medios and the rest of the squad in the early part of the game with their swap to somehow get an advantage for themselves. But complexity is seen right through that strategy, and now they're starting to turn the tide, as we saw within our last fight. This top lane, Woo. riveting. Good dodge there by West Rice. Well, it's actually, it. this top lane All is a lot it. more exciting now because West Rice is so under farmed <laughs> that it's it's just so dangerous for him. It makes it more exciting. You're like, when is Ball's gonna kill him? Is Ball's gonna dive him? Maybe this turret's gonna go down. And he's so what you're saying is you like club and baby seals. Mm, interesting interpretation, and I would have to <laughs> disagree with your interpretation okay. right there. All right. I'd have to say I'm against that. Looks like West Rice has official some. stance is no. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like we're going to have the turret almost going down, whether West Rice is there for it or not. I'm not sure Cloud9 worries about it. It's going to be Ooh, high. moving high up. Coming up. Yep. Uh oh. Is... Can he make his way through these wards, though? There's. Yeah, he gets pinged out. You can see, though, even though West Rice is so far down, this is the massive sustain that comes along with Maokai. And he, if he keeps on dodging like this. Ah, he's dead. He made, high made his way in. Interesting Even with attack. The miss. Probably was doing race at the time. I know he, he probably made the call to the team, but there's not much you can do once you're that. Now, uh, they did get the lead. kill, but it is a trade on turrets. So right. Complexity don't lose out too much here. And they make a stronger push. This is a much better case for the second turret here for Complexity. They have a lot more power to take this one down than Cloud9 do have at Complexity's secondary turret. So Complexity are getting a strong shove on the secondary. However, mid is the focus for C9. And they if they get another kill plus the turret, then Cloud9 will not have to stop their push. And Complexity will continue to just yeah. bleed more and more objectives. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Nice they get done. it, though. And Can they pinch him? Back off mid. Huge swing here, though. Can Cloud9 defend the response? This is four members mid for Complexity. Looks like they just recall and clear out Vision instead. It's looked grim before, but with Mundo on the team, Cloud9 has definitely pulled out some late game strategies where they just swarm a fight and completely take you by storm. With the teleport up, the ball's still growing in that top lane. It's just the Visage right now, he's up yep, against quite a bit of the it. magic damage. I'm sure they're not too worried about losing these. We'll see if Complexity, though, can push this advantage. Now they have the 100 gold lead working for themselves and it's paying off. So even though Cloud9 got that kill, big pickups for Complexity. We have hit the point where Sneaky's got his Blade of the Ruined King. The thing is, Corky's, yep. Corky already had his Streaming Force, you know, a couple minutes even before this. So opening up on Corky is still a dangerous proposition. If Corky's able to hit his Phosphorus Bomb, and it becomes a little bit more difficult to pull off that assassination, and Sneaky would probably need Lemonation behind him to pull Cloud it off. Nine. Based off of lanes, based off of CS, they should really be handling this. But right now, Complexity is finding the way Just to flip that here. seesaw More back and forth. Four. Lemonation backs off, so that means Sneaky and Meteos need to do the same. They should be fine because they have ward coverage as well. Pink ward defense is up. Pink ward defense is down. Pink War defense is up. <laughs> it's like they want vision or something. I don't get it. I don't know about that one. The second one they just placed there. Not only does it overlap with where the other Pink War covers, but it's also standing out in the open. So uh, who, whose was that? That's a, uh, what did their coach call it? The uh, bowl of poop instead of the bowl uh, of whipped cream? <laughs> that's, a, that's definitely a bowl of poop board. <laughs> that might be a bowl of poop board. <laughs> We'll see, though. Uh, what 30 it? seconds. I can't believe they come up with that. 18 minutes on the clock. We'll have to get a little more aggression from both of these teams. This is what I was talking about. Can Cloud9 create the chaos in this fight, or is Complexity crowd control everything together in a tiny little ball? Yeah, we've seen the effect of those, uh, the skill shot CC for Complexity. If they get another pick, yeah. they That's can the thing easily you talking about, too, is they game. can punch through the front line with that Syndra and still get the rat -tat, tat as well in the same line of damage. Definitely thinks they can work uh, off of. Interesting maneuver. Complexity shoving up the mid to try and gain positioning on Cloud9 in defense of a secondary turret. 
forcing the choice of burning a dragon down or coming through a narrower corridor in which the probability of landing one of those bindings or cocoons goes through the roof and the follow-up shockwave would be devastating. So Cloud9 does not want to funnel through one of those small corridors. Instead, they bunch up by a dragon pit. We'll They'll see if they it. can disperse here. Dragon going down, and they zone out Kiss! Medio is able to get it. Sneaky gets hit by the shockwave, He's but he alive. has all the time in the world to fire. Great shield coming from Prowley, and they save Kaz on the outside. He's only offering the bait right now for the rest of the fight. Cloud9 was able to focus down and take down Bubba Dub instantly. Ooh. More business going over to West Rice as Balls finds another kill on the game, and Cloud9 regains control. That's the problem there. If you're delayed as a Maokai and you also go Rod of Ages, that thing, he just completed it. Still yeah. needs a lot longer to stack up. He's very, very weak at the moment. That's Taking a long down charge. Very quickly. Cloud9, not only did they not have to give up damage on their uh, secondary turret, but they also got the dragon. Blue team's turret has been I don't know destroyed. there. After seeing the aftermath, it's easy to say, oh yeah, Complexity should have just shoved up mid instead of trying to fight around with that dragon, but. No hindsight. Either or. Kansas that gets destroyed. That shockwave, shockwave was only almost. hit Sneaky, and Sneaky, it it's didn't really even close. hurt him because it brought Sneaky closer in, and their front line had such a big right. presence. Sneaky did not have to worry. I believe that was Ignite, and I don't think that uh, ball actually even hit him there. No, you're right. Yep, Ignite was just off a of cooldown. Bubba Dub almost skirted away from the danger. And 20 minutes on the clock, Cloud9 regains a bit of control and history repeats itself for Cloud9. It was in a dragon fight where they love to be and where they love to take control of the game. Yeah, this time, C9 coming up with the dragon and the kills afterward. Yeah. And that's very big for them because they have the opportunity with these double invis characters to really keep complexity balled up inside their own territory and just starve them out. It's the same age-old uh, sieging tactics. They don't actually have to siege up around turrets. If you cut off supply lines, uh, then you can just wait them out here. Looking around at finished items. You almost finished up onto Sneaky. Definitely Ooh, has that two what item a combo. Threshold. That is devastating. That means that the assassinations yeah. are very, very, very scary coming from Sneaky right now. Because the thing about oh, Yomu is it's flat armor penetration. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And they love it. Pew, pew. Oh. Get them down. Oh, my goodness. The thing about Yomu is not only the burst in power for the active, <laughs> But the flat armor penetration makes you rip through the targets that you're specifically looking to assassinate, which are the AD carry and the AP carry, who at this stage in the game, nobody builds flat armor. So the no. flat armor penetration, huge. Oh, oh no, what zero. more? Throws it down on the ground. High getting a kill for himself as well. That's three members of complexity down. Oh, Hi, you're taking the turret here, buddy. Situations are very close there from High. He goes for the Valiant turret. Tanking. So it gets out safe. Everybody gets out safe on that one. High's kind of limping away, but let's see that's again. Yeah, we probably we, wasn't even ready. We saw him coming down the lane and he just completed those combos like you're talking about. But there is Lemon right behind him to save him from oh the Orky. As we thought. Probably's looking to catch up. There he goes. Throws but the, the speed move again. from Ghostblade, just right. as useful as the offensive capabilities. How does complexity answer? They were definitely caught off guard there, and that doesn't help Kobe, because just previously, Cloud9 had won an even bigger fight. So they're just getting a bag of chips on the side now. Complexity really needs to pull themselves out of this rut because they just found themselves 7,000 gold down in a matter of no time. Yeah, it's going to be really difficult. As we said, it's so easy for C9 to cut off the supply line right. because, as we just saw, anybody outside of their turrets and outside of their pink ward defense line is going to need to have a buddy with them. Yes, Complexity were the first ones in North America to start that jungle buddy system. Now they need to implement the uh, nobody's able to get outside of our towers without a buddy system. <laughs> it's going to be quite difficult. A lot of Complexity has sunk some early money into the home guards to keep their base alive, which is necessary, but still hinders their late game cap capability, which they're already not scaling super well into, but they can get there. They have the Oriana. That's about it. Thing is, Cloud9 at the turrets, if they actually siege all the way up to a turret, not 
that strong. And they have... That's right. They definitely have a pretty big weakness to uh, West Rice on Maokai, you know, Flash Twisted advancing in with a Shockwave Ball ready. Mm. So Cloud9, they are probably going to have to just continue to blank the warbs, uh, the map in wards. Yeah. And uh, control the neutral objectives until they get one of those key picks, until they can have Sneaky or Meos plus High catching somebody off guard and taking them down. And look at this, we even have a rush from Bubba Dub on the Twin Shadows as well. Very interesting builds to mitigate what Cloud9 is bringing to the table. 10 to 3, 24 minutes in, and Cloud9 says it's time to clear out Complexity's security system here in the jungle. All right, West Rice Flash is available. So, Complexity fans, they still have something to hope for. If Complexity can get a surprise Maokai, you know, twist advancing in and a shockwave to pull together these squishy members of the backline, if they can get a, a high plus sneaky shockwave, uh, they can still pull that combo off. Because Maokai as well brings in a good amount of AoE when he jumps in yeah. there. So shockwave, uh, dissonance, blow. plus all of Maokai's AoE that he pops off when he yeah. jumps in could be enough to blow up that uh, backside. And that's where all the power is, because High is the one with most of the kills. And, of course, the Sneaky is one of the main targets. Yeah, Sneaky, 3,300 HP. Now Warmogs and everything else built up around him, especially with that Visage Health regen assisting him greatly. 42, uh, 43,000 to 36 as two of four dragons now going over to Cloud9. They're just kind of biding their time before they, like you said, get to a turret. Everything they've gotten that's given them a lead has been the fight at Dragon or Sneaky sneaking up on somebody. It hasn't been at the turrets. Yeah, and Cloud9 are playing it well. They've always been the team that's pretty much the best right. um, at not rushing when they don't have the power to rush mm -hmm. down and siege up turrets. Um, they are just slowly controlling all of the gold outside of the map uh, outside of the turrets yeah. for complexity. Very methodical. And just waiting uh, until they do get the opportunity for one of those picks. The other th reason why complexity have to do that twist advance, by the way, to carry the shockwave in, is because there's a Braum on the other team. And Braum can block a command attack right. from Oriana and stop that. the ball there. So we already saw it once today. Uh, the only way you're going to get in there is if you got West Rice, the linebacker, to take the ball <laughs> into the back lines and actually deliver it himself. A suicide probably, mission, Kobe. Probably won't be able to do it. <laughs> Absolutely suicide, but sometimes it needs to happen. High picking up blue. If they haven't, they'll at least clear this. They actually already got dragons. They don't have to clear it. What am I talking about? He, however, will put pressure down towards the bottom lane. And there's an interesting, interesting. there's an interesting point that Cloud9 do come up on as well. If they control the gold for long enough, then they can just pile some more armor onto balls. And have him just stand in the front. If he continually slow, if he gets some slows onto West Rise and he chain slows West Rise, he can keep him off of diving in for a long time. You can see West Rise trying to sneak around the side, and he almost gets picked off already just by Lemon on the front lines here. So Balls and Lemon, what their job is to do is to screen out anyone who's going to try and get to that back line. So they slowly pick up. Uh, Only to half health. That's actually pretty promising here for Complexity. If he can get back into the fight, it'll be quite nice. It's and a stun! It, wow, everybody's taking way too much poke damage just across the board there. Cloud9 doesn't even have to focus fire. The skill shots are enough one on the other. And it looks like they're going to be able to back off now, happily with an inhibitor in their name. It looks like they have some pushing to do in the outside lanes, well, or it's going to be this Baron prep. Yeah, the, the thing yeah, about the Baron is, first. yeah, they have a lot of work to do if they want to set up a, a Baron bait. There are a lot of wards there, and they do not have... Well, they have two more pink wards that they could uh, spread around. Two accurate sweepers used. Oh, that's a juicy pink ward to fight over here. C9 really want to take that one out. Does Baron end the game? No, this Pink Ward in mid does. No, oh, it didn't end the game. Wait a minute! Whoa, he goes oh. on the balls! <laughs> Do they really? Nobody knows if they really want to fight or not. Telegraphing this one over. Balls, there he goes, throws on the ultimate. Meteos over the wall instantly to throw down. Oh, Back good shot, Brains! They try to get a good hit in. Probably goes down with the shockwave going off, so he gets the damage out that he needs. But it's West Rice getting focused down. Not enough of a tank. Ball's going deep here. Oh, he hits oh! it on the flash! 
calculated, but he cannot get any farther. Scat of the Week does not hit, but they're going to have now lanes to pressure. Look at this in the bottom lane. Robert Exley and Bubba Dub, very reminiscent, going into the base themselves. Man, Meteos got out alive, too, with his little flank mission on the side. He flashed in and still got out. Yeah, yeah. He, he was uh, he was able to get risky. in there on the back line, take out the DPS from Complexity, zone them away, and there All was right. no follow-up damage. This is a great... I think that's pretty good for them. After losing so much, they do not get Baron, but they do open up something they can... Oh, he's night. toast. Ouch. Wait, no, Bubba Dub, don't stay! Good flash. That's one of my favorite. High 7, 1, and 2 now. Oriana yeah. is mass... Or, er, Syndra is massive. Wasn't afraid to first pick that one coming out. They kind of got stiffed by that pick of Elise coming out of complexity, so they said, all right, we'll just blind pick our mid, and then he'll go 7, 1, and 2. Very nice job, Cloud9 also calling in the lane swap to start this game off. Kind of hindered things in the early game. But Complexity was not able to fully come back. Now down 9,000 gold. Let's this see this So this is fight. Complexity's choice to fight over a pink ward in the mid lane. Right. Where they don't even have a turret to defend themselves. The best thing for Complexity to do is force Cloud9 to fight them at turrets. Because that's what Cloud9 do not want to do. But they force a fight in this mid lane here. And you can see how they get, uh, you know, just destroyed. Wow. Meteos' zone Getting there was so out. good. Yeah, I mean, Meteos playing it from the back line, like we talked about, to slow down the DPS. Yeah. Sort of, if Robert is not able to auto-attack throughout the fight, then you mitigate so much damage from Complexity. It was just a weird choice by Complexity to actually fight over a pink ward right. out in the open. It was kind of like... Then huddle up and defend. Their so taunt and went wrong. Yeah, they baited themselves with a pink ward, exactly. really. Exactly. Exactly. Going deep. They going real deep. Three inside the base. They're still looking at the turret high and sneaky on the backside. Say, guys, we'll be there in a second. Just kind of hold the front line. And they do so. Balls. Business everywhere. He's making deals this entire game. 4 0 and 5 on Mundo. Going wherever he pleases. Going 5 0 and 5. He's going to get out before the turret can even take him down. He's eating turret shots for breakfast. Double kill for balls coming in. 17 to 3. As Cloud9 will not let complexity take another game off of them here in the final Super Week of North American LCS. 31 minutes into the game. Robert actually gets popped up. They get some more fantasy points for themselves and their fans. Cloud9 takes down complexity. Pretty strong showing as well. Pretty strong, a little bit of a falter. Thought Cloud9 was going to let complexity come back in that mid game, but they, they could have actually made a few mistakes. Complexity's lanes were not as far as they needed to be along. West Rice did not have the best early game. And that really gave Cloud9 positioning to do whatever. Meteos having a pretty great game around the jungle this time. And Cloud9 comes up with another win on the split. Well, Cloud9's play in the lane swap was just so much better than Complexity's. Right. West Rice was so far down in experience and gold compared to balls. I mean, Crowd9, what they did is they had Lemon supporting balls in the bottom lane, so yeah. on Mundo with Braum protecting him, they were able to get a decent amount of CS and a huge experience lead on West Rice. And then when West Rice got pulled up to that top lane where Sneaky was uh, freezing it very deep in his own territory, they really underestimated the level six Twitch. Right. And that's probably what cost them the game. Just Freeing over a first blood to the level six Twitch and destroying Maokai's chances of coming back by dying again there, where he really needed to take that opportunity to Cloud get back into the yeah. game and get some more experience. Cloud9 attacked immediately. Until now, I forgot that Sneaky actually came into, into mid lane right at level one and pushed yeah. out Prolly to 200 HP, which causes Prolly to chug his potions right away. Not having potions immediately in mid lane. Against you, Syndra? Against Syndra, you have to play amazingly safe. And Prolly's usually the guy that's putting so much pressure on the lane that that's where the jungler's being called. So the lane swap, everything else that was happening in that early game hit onto Prolly really started to shut down complexity from when they, when they thrive. Yeah, it was all about Cloud9 deciding what this game was going to look like. You know, starting off the um, the lane swap, going with the gank mid, and Complexity trying to adapt to it, not coming up uh, up to par. No, it was close. A few fights that they wanted, they gave Cloud9 that dragon fight where Cloud9's like, hey, this is actually where we get back into the majority of our games if we're ever down, or just make the lead that much bigger. They slowly pushed it. You can see I'm talking to... Thanks, Riv. Joined here by Sneaky and Lemonation of Cloud9. Now, my first question for you has got to be, you started the day off with an unfortunate loss. So how 
how does it feel, one, to come back and get that win, that much-needed win, but two, more so is how the preparation is after a loss to come back into a win. Lemon? Well, we only had one game between to actually look at what they did in their initial game and see how that affects their game plan going in. So we kind of just have to get over the game loss like as quickly as possible, just basically ignore it and just move from there. So is there anything specifically that you gleaned from Complexity's first game of the day that you were able to utilize in this game? Yeah, we saw them prioritize Maokai extremely highly. I think that was the most interesting thing that we didn't actually know if they had that priority or not. All right. Well, then, Sneaky, with that Maokai priority, you guys chose to pull the lane swap because you had two giant tanks and you picked up the Twitch. So talk to me a little bit about the decision there for the lane swap and how it ended up benefiting you guys more so than them. Um, well, Twitch is actually pretty bad to be 2 -er unless he's against a really weak laner because of the nerfs that he most recently got. It was like base AD, poison damage. I've tried 2 v 2 so much and I just lose out in almost all trades and I miss kills because of the nerf. So 2 v one is like the most optimal strat for Twitch and it came out really well for us because Maokai was, I, I'm not really sure exactly where he was the entire time, but he got super behind and I was literally double his level. I was three, or he was three, I was six, and we were able to just force a free kill on him. Yeah, that was a really interesting gank there, top line. You already level six. You were the highest level on your team, actually, at that point, which is very odd for an AD carry. But Lemon, speaking more to the Maokai being so far behind, and at one point, Mundo had 100 CS to Maokai's 50, right? So it's literally double yeah, the CS. Yeah. Why is it that we didn't see you, and this is not a criticism, just a question is, why is it that we didn't see you guys forcing objectives and diving turrets? Instead, you opted for trades around the map. Well, they're a full magic damage comp, and we had Mundo. So basically, we knew once we actually got our magic resist, we could have these like amazing team fights where we would like guarantee win them. So actually, in early fights, Mundo isn't that, isn't that strong compared to like a mage like Maokai is. So we didn't actually want to force too hard until we actually had the MR. Right, so okay, so you're actually taking your lead and saying we can we can use this to, to secure the late game and make sure that we're going to be have a strong front line to protect our carries. You don't want to be too antsy. Gotcha. Um, now, sneaky. Something that we noticed in this game is the fact that two ADCs were banned, both Trist and Kogma, which are by far the most popular picks at the moment. What what are we? What's going to happen when Lucian comes back? Right, is it going to be harder to target ban those ADCs out? Is he still going to be played? What's your prediction there? It'll definitely be a lot harder to target ban ADs because right now it's super awkward where Twist, uh, Tristana and Kogma are like super high priority. And when those are gone, there's like Ezreal, Corky, and uh, Twitch available. But there's no Lucian. So next patch, when we see Lucian back, he'll be just super high priority as well. I think he's still really good on this new newest patch. Yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna ask. Could you elaborate a little bit more on like his current changes and what that does to him as a carry? Well, they, they nerfed his range, but they gave him a lot more mobility. But in the most recent patch, they actually took back a lot of that mobility. So before in the patch before they buffed him, they you could e in, use your whole combo, and then e out, and you'd be the freest trade ever. But now you e in, and you're gonna die. Yeah, de definitely got abused a little bit for the week or so that he had that high mobility. Now, Lemon, moving forward, you guys have TSM tomorrow, who is the team that's kind of vying for that first seed buy with you guys. You now secured a half half game up with that win there, but how important is that match tomorrow in guaranteeing that first round buy? That game basically decides who's getting second place. I think it's going to be very difficult for either team if they go through a loss tomorrow to actually pull ahead. So it's basically up to that game. And then looking even further to the actual playoffs, regardless of what seed you finish in, because you have clinched your spot there, what is the experience that you guys have as a team going to do for you in these kind, in these very long best of series? We're jumping from best of ones up to best of fives. So as a team that's now been through it, you know, multiple times as compared to say complexity or something like that, what how's that going to help you in the playoffs? I think we'll have more experience and more ability to actually adapt faster in these kind of best of threes, best of fives. So I think it'll be quite good for us. All right, and yeah, sneak I think we've learned a lot through our best of threes and best of fives. Usually, it's like adaptability throughout the entire series is what needs to be learned. And I don't know if, if a lot of teams like, say, Complexity, who hasn't actually done many of them, would know. Well, so you, you had touched on the fact that you, you kind of had to do that today even, right? You, you played a game, you had only one game to kind of you let everything go and then study up and make your, you know, your decisions based on the next match. Granted, a different team. So my final question to you, Sneaky, is just looking forward, what are the, what are the finishing touches to make sure that you guys can you know, 3-0 a team or, or whatever going through playoffs? I think it's just perfecting our practice coming in the next 
two weeks that we have. So if we get down our practice to the best that it can and then we come out ahead through that, then we'll be good. All right, anything to add there, Lemon? It's an extremely big patch that's actually coming out. So we have to adapt like very quickly to this. Do you find that your team is one that can adapt more quickly than others? Do you think that's an advantage for you? Historically, we have been able to adapt quite well compared to other teams, but it's different every patch, so you never know. All right. Well, best of luck in that adaptation. Congratulations on the win, and hopefully we'll see a couple more, right, in the next coming days. Hope so. Now, we've got to patch up the Nexus for our final LCS game of the day, CLG versus Dignitas. The North American LCS continues in three and a half.